The Sony Alpha 6100 is an excellent camera for families, aspiring photographers, and even some enthusiasts. Being referred as a budget camera, the Sony Alpha 6100 is catching quite popularity in the market, especially with its big brother, the Sony A6400. But should you consider this as your next camera update? In this video, you will find just that. So hey, what's up guys, it's me Aryan here and I'm back again with my another video and this time around, I'm going to be reviewing the Sony A6100. So I bought this camera for myself a while ago and I'm using this camera mainly to make my YouTube content. So basically video, but to make things more informative for you guys, to help you decide is this camera really for you or not, I have divided this video into two categories. It's as simple as that. The pros of this camera and also the cons. So make sure you watch the whole video so that you guys get an idea of, of how actually this camera is. So without any further wasting time, let's jump right into the video. So I have my list here and I'm going to start with the pros of this camera. So number one, it's small and lightweight. This camera is only 396 grams, which includes the battery itself and the smaller kit lens. So that is the first thing that you see in this camera. It's small, compact factor that makes it really stand out because it's a mirrorless camera. That's why it's able to get that small body. But that size really works out if you want to do a lot of outdoor photography or videography, as you will be able to handle this camera more nicer way than those bigger bulkier cameras pro number two the autofocus let me come closer you see the autofocus if i go even back this is the speed of the autofocus on this camera right now i'm using the kit lens with it which comes with this camera and talking about the autofocus i'm genuinely saying that it's really really good the reason for me to actually change my previous camera with this one was mainly because of the autofocus system on this camera sony recently with their cameras have been doing really really well with their autofocus system especially if you consider the canon options as well because their dual pixel autofocus system is also really good so if you are a one-man army and basically going to do everything by yourself this camera's autofocus is really really gonna help you in that the third pro is the 11 frames per second burst mode in this camera and 425 autofocus points which makes it really easy to focus your face and everything and i also mentioned this thing that it has face tracking as well as eye tracking as well so it really tracks your eyes where it's going and also it has dogs and pets eye tracking if i'm not wrong yeah because it has that much autofocus points and it has 11 frames per second shoot this camera can also be considered a good option if you are into street photography and mainly sports photography because that situation requires speed of the camera and because it's 11 frames per second you're really going to be easily able to capture the shot that you want. And if you are going to use a really good quality SD card in this camera, you are really going to get that speed as well of reading and writing your files. The third pro, as I again mentioned, the eye tracking as well as the face tracking feature. Now, really quickly, I'm going to be showing you guys a demonstration of the autofocus on this camera. So I'm going to come forward and you're going to see the speed of the autofocus on this. Now I'm going to get on the side and now it will show you the autofocus. And if I basically, if I go back, then also it's going to show you the autofocus. But basically, this is one of the biggest pros of this camera, the autofocus system. So number five, the overall image quality of this camera. Because this camera has 24.2 megapixels inside its sensor, when you're going to click photos with it, you're, you will be really able to zoom in those photos and if you want to crop them in your later post-production. And you're not going to lose that much quality because of those. But not only that, the color science of this camera is also really good. I personally think that it kind of gives you a little bit of artificial vibe if I'm comparing to those big Canon cameras because I really like the color science of Canon cameras. But if you can color grade your videos or photos afterwards really well, then there's not that big of an issue here. For me personally, the photos I have taken have been really good so far. They have been crisp photos, they are sharp. The dynamic range is also really good. Paired up with the burst mode and the autofocus mode, the photos comes really good. Now the sixth pro is the flip out screen. Now before the Sony cameras did not had the flip out screens, even those big, ex more expensive Sony cameras too. If I mention the Sony A7 series or A7R series, 
in the beginning but now Sony has came up with the flip screens on their budget category cameras as well so both the Sony a6100 and a6400 now have the flip out screen which is really helpful then again if you are shooting by yourself like I am right now this camera is basically on a tripod with this flip out screen right now because I'm shooting outside I'm not using an external monitor right now I can clearly see myself in that 3 inch LCD display also to mention that it is also touchscreen so you can quickly use that touchscreen feature on the LCD to quickly change your autofocus point just by using your screen and not by those buttons that you used to use before but not everything about this camera is great so that's why here are the cons of the camera so number one the EVF and LCD of this camera are kind of low, low quality and by low quality I mean the pixel count on the LCD and the EVF is not that much. Specifically saying the EVF has 1.4 million pixels and the LCD which is 3 inches by the way has around 9 million pixels. So my personal opinion is it's not that sharp and specifically using the OLED viewfinder in this camera I didn't find the screen as sharp as I wanted it to be. And sometimes using the EVF I found that that EVF mount shows me a little more colorful photo than it actually is. So when I use the EVF mount and look at the photo on the LCD screen, I see a little bit of color change because the EVF showed me a little bit more colorful photo but the LCD didn't. So that's kind of a little thing that I personally observed while using this camera. The second con is going to be a little bit hurtful for those outdoor photographers and videographers because this camera does not have weather sealing. And because of that, I have seen online reviews of outdoor photographers and videographers saying that they saw dust spots on the camera while they used it outside. Now, if you are going to be shooting indoors, there's not a big problem in that case. But for outdoor shooters, that might be a little bit of a problem because because of no weather sealing, there can be chance of using this camera while raining and that might might damage the camera. And clearly you don't want that especially if you're outside doing your work or following your passion while you're working on the camera and it gets damaged because of dust conditions or rain conditions any type of weather condition so you will have to apply a little bit more safety while using this camera outside the number third con is something that i saw quickly while i first time used the camera and that is you cannot still use the touch screen to navigate through the settings of the camera now many people argue that the settings on the camera can be a little bit better but not using that touch screen feature to navigate through your settings on your camera can be a little rough for some people because because I didn't know that when I was first buying the camera but when I saw that there, the touch screen cannot be used with the settings I was kind of a little dis disappointed. It's not that big of a game changer. <laughs> it's not that big of a game changer but this is something that you need to know about. And don't worry guys, I got you. And the fourth con, I cannot stress enough on this, but there's no dedicated charger included in the camera box. You just get a USB cable and an adapter like you get with your phones. And you literally will have to keep the battery inside the camera and charge it via the micro USB cable that is included in the box. Now you can buy that accessory outside from Sony as well. And there's some third party chargers also available in the market. But not having it straight out of the box is kind of a big deal because you will have to charge your camera much often than doing many other things. So I wish Sony did include the dedicated charger for this camera inside the box because that could have been a little bit more accessible and easy to use. Con number five, no image stabilization. Now, especially considering the price of the camera, I'm not saying it's really a big con because it is a budget camera but I really just wanted to point this out that this camera does not have image stabilization built in but some of the lenses that are available for this camera do have optical image stabilization if I'm not wrong correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section down below the camera body itself does not have it now if you're specifically a videographer that could have helped if you are shooting handheld and not on a tripod because that would have been a little bit more easier to do with the image stabilization when you don't have those big stabilizers. But then again, especially considering the price point of this camera, it's not really a huge deal with that. And number six, talking about the quality of the camera body. Now right now, I'm going to compare this camera with its bigger brother, the A6400, because that camera has 
a metal body and this camera has a modified plastic body so by that what i mean is when you will hold this camera in your hands it's not going to feel that much premium because it's not a metal body and because the a6400 has it i wish that this camera too has that but we don't that's why we have it as a con sure there are more options in the market like the it's bigger brother the sony a6400 or maybe like fujifilm x330 but they can fall outside your budget because they are more expensive than this camera also you don't lose too much with this camera so overall i would say it's a really good camera and it is worth checking out your time and making it one of the options while you are buying a camera and that was pretty much it for today guys hopefully i cleared your mind about this camera there were some things in the video that you guys may have already known but they had to be pointed out please let me know in the comment section down below which is your favorite camera and you would like to buy i would love to have a conversation with all of you guys in the comment section and if you like the video definitely hit the thumbs up button and subscribe if you are new to the channel and that's pretty much it this is arin sedora signing off for now make sure you subscribe and i will see you guys in my next video peace